Where do cover crops fit in to a livestock only farm? I'm Rob from Dowdle Family Farms and I'm on a mission to improve the soil health on our farm in regenerative ways while producing some of the highest quality beef, pork, and even honey. With the rise in popularity of regenerative agriculture promoted by people like Gabe Brown, grazing cows and even sheep and goats on cover crops has received a lot of attention. On the other hand, however, regenerative ranchers like Greg Judy have brought a lot of attention to practices like rotational grazing, mob grazing, management intensive grazing, and similar practices. In fact, Greg Judy and Joel Salatin prefer grazing systems in which you don't plant any annuals. Most livestock producers who graze cover crops are row crop farmers using the ruminants like cattle or sheep to graze and terminate those cover crops. Our farm is unique in that I grow cover crops to improve soil health and to graze our livestock on. While we can raise livestock without cover crops, the combination of cover crops and livestock can pay dividends for soil and animal health. Before we begin, let me set a little bit of our farm's context. We have about 150 acres of pasture on our farm, and over the years, my dad has transitioned many of the worn out cotton fields or scrubby, unproductive woodland to the pasture that it is today. He planted tall fescue like in the pasture behind me, and since we have added some clovers as well, but some of the pasture performs pretty well while other parts of the farm are in really poor shape. I've taken some of the worst performing fields and converted them to annual cover crop fields that I graze with livestock. Some people say that annual grasses like corn deplete soil health while perennials build soil health. And while this is true in a lot of instances, there are times where annuals can build soil health remarkably well quicker than perennials. Sorghum sedan grass, for example, can grow in dry, low fertility soils with low pH and no or very small amounts of fertilizers. They can outperform crops with high fertility requirements. One of the best benefits of sorghum sedan grass is that it is a cheap, exceptional feed for cattle. Depending on the variety of grown, it can cost as little as $15 an acre to plant, and it can produce upwards of 12 tons of dry matter per acre throughout the warm growing season. And we are lucky if we get three tons of dry matter per acre in our fescue pastures. Further, sorghum sedan grass is a great crop to finish cattle on. They gain weight rapidly, and it's exceptional. Many regenerative ranchers will jumpstart for soil fertility by importing hay on the farm. And this is a great way of introducing new seeds and fertilizing while grazing a worn out field. But imagine the impact that 10 to 20 bales of hay per acre would have on the soil life. That's the kind of growth you get with sorghum sedan grass in many good environments. It is remarkable. Another benefit of growing annual cover crops is that we can grow two or three or maybe even four different cycles of crop throughout a 12 month year. It's not just that sorghum sedan grass is more productive, but in addition to that, we can grow cool season crops that increase the dry matter per acre on that ground. When managed properly, each of these cover crop cycles continues to build soil health even faster. The downside of growing cover crops, obviously, is that they need to be planted. This is why we have been so hesitant to do this on more than just about 10 or 20 acres out of our whole farm. Historically, I've had to lightly disc the seed into the soil and it's taken some time. However, with the purchase of our new no-till drill, uh, it's made planting so much easier, so much faster, so much cheaper, and it's better for soil life. We'll see how that works out in the next 12 months. If you have mediocre pasture, which many people transitioning to regener regenerative agriculture have mediocre pasture at best, then some livestock do not perform as well on them. Grass finishing cattle can be done on a perennial pasture, but it takes exceptionally good perennial pasture to accomplish this. If you don't have much tender, nutritious cover crops like a sorghum sedan grass, helps facilitate this process much more than mediocre perennial pastures do. Further, pigs do not perform well on pasture forage alone. Unless you can cultivate and grow crops specifically for pigs, I get a lot of comments on YouTube from people who say that I need to raise kales on pasture and rotate them, and we do. But pigs raised on pasture are often fed more grain than if they're raised in barns. They expend more energy on pasture, regulating body temperature and moving around so much more, and the grass that they're eating is not providing much nutrition, only some phytonutrients. 
It rarely reduces grain cost unless there's a really large amount of nutritious crops for them. We grow cover crop species for our pigs on annual pasture and we're grazing these crops, we can reduce our feed costs by an actual 70 to 90 percent. By growing these annual crops for pigs, we're eliminating the feed stocks that are grown in monoculture agriculture. A diverse annually planted cover crop is so much better for the environment than a monoculture crop of corn, soybeans, peas, peanuts, wheat, barley, or any other feed stock for your pigs. Further, these feedstocks require high levels of fertilizers, whereas our cover crops do not. Depending on the purpose, we grow different cover crops to meet different needs. We have three priorities in growing our cover crops, depending on our goals. They can be improving soil health, grazing cows, or grazing pigs. Improving soil health and grazing with cows often overlap. If I'm trying to improve soil health, I'm looking for diversity, but also biomass and dry matter per acre. Typically, I'll come back and graze the crop with cows or maybe even pigs, but it, if necessary to improve soil health, I may even mow the crop so that it will regrow and produce even more biomass. Let's take a look at our warm season cover crops and what that mix looks like for soil health and then its management. Sorghum sedan grass is the base of that mix because it produces tons of dry matter, it has deep roots, and I'll usually include pearl millet as a second grass and it performs pretty well. I'll add some buckwheat to help make phosphorus more available, along with sunflowers and okra to help with those deep tap roots. Legumes like cowpeas will help fix nitrogen, and to manage this crop, I'll often graze it with cattle. Pigs don't perform well on it. Sorghum sedan grass and pearl millet regrow really quickly, as will the cowpeas and the okra. But to keep it from growing seed, I have, may have to mow it because I cannot graze it quickly enough. This is the same grazing mix that I use with the cows, although I may not have okra or sunflowers in there, but it works really well. To graze cover crops with pigs, I'll keep some sorghum sedan grass and millet, but at lower rates. I'll add more forage soybeans, mung beans, cowpeas, and buckwheat at higher rates than I normally would in that soil health mix. They tend to be more expensive crops. Further, I'll add some brassicas and others that will help increase the protein in this mix. It's more expensive, but because the rates of nutritious cover crops grow up, it's more effective for grazing pigs. It's still great for soil health, just not quite as much as some of the other crops. I can afford to add more expensive crops to the mix if I'm grazing it with pigs because the cost savings in grain that I'll be able to achieve. I may not be worth $125 an acre to plant a cover crop for cows because they perform well on mediocre summer grasses, but it's worth $120 an acre to plant a cover crop mix for pigs and it saves tons of feed costs. The cost savings in grain that we use to feed the pigs means that I can afford to plant more diverse, more expensive crops for them at higher rates than if I was just trying to do it for cows alone. Depending on your setting, cover crops can play a huge role in livestock farms if you're trying to improve soil health rapidly, or if you're trying to finish out some grass finished ruminants, or even reduce your pig feed costs. Take care and have a great day.